Hey everyone, this looks familiar from the 20 and some odd videos we did on D&D 5th &D edition. Uh, we wanted to do a more in-depth breakdown of Horde of the Dragon Queen. We kind of glanced over it along with Rise of Tiamat and um, Elemental Evil and I like, lost my as a fan delver when we did our pre-written campaign things. So, be forewarned, this is going to be a spoiler-filled review. Lots of spoilers. We're going to go over this, though, more in-depth. When we yeah. finish Rise of Tiamat, we're going to do that as well. Same thing with Elemental Evil. Maybe November? I'm shooting for November for, for Rise, Rise of, of Tiamat. Tiamat. So, we're going to go through this. We're going to start off by discussing what the setting is, the war where it takes place, and kind of the overall view of that. Um, what the goal of this campaign is, because this is, you know, mm -hmm. a smaller part of the mm -hmm. greater campaign. Mm -hmm. Um... We're going to break down each chapter individually, and when we talk about those, we're going to talk about what's supposed to happen in that given chapter, uh, what info they give you as the DM, and like what you're supposed to know, and what any things that you had to change, um, what happened when we actually played through it, and what could have been done better. So we figure this is a pretty good way to go through this, and this way, if you're on the fence about whether or not to get this, you might have seen a lot of controversy of how lethal this campaign is, because it could be very dangerous at early levels. Is that a thing? Yeah. It's like a really big thing. I mean, we rolled stats in our game, too, so we were more powerful. Oh, uh, okay. So imagine you're doing this with a point by where at most you're starting with two stats at 16, and you have to play the first night. Fair. You could be dead at least twice. Fair. If not more than yeah. that. And if you didn't have a well-optimized party, either. Like, no. this is your first time playing, and you're like, oh, cool, we want to have, like, a wizard... A warlock, a sorcerer, and a ranger. It's not Good good. luck. Game it's over. Not just, just quit. You just die. But, um, die. I mean, fighting, what's his face? In the, oh, you, we'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. So, um, I'm going to, yeah, let's just go. All right, cool. So, one. Talk about the setting in general. What the, what the overall description of this setting is. Tyranny of Dragons is an epic story told across the first two adventure products, of which this is the first. Yeah. I'm not gonna read that. So okay. That's good. Um, all right. So in this world, there is a cult. It's called the Cult of the Dragon. A little too on the nose. That was the first thing that came out in our campaign. Is we're like, wait, they call themselves? I think I did this. Yeah. I think I did this speech. C cults. Yeah. Um, yeah. They're trying to raise Tiamat and get treasure for her for the horde. Of the dragon queen. The queen of the dragons. Or if we want to do a a fun uh, short version, Hot DQ. Hot DQ. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it is made by Cobalt Press. Uh, I think we mentioned this in the pre-written campaigns, but the way these things are working is Dungeons & Dragons. They put out, Wizards of the Coast put out the core books, the Player's Handbook, Monster Manual, Dungeon Master Guide. And they're sort of subbing this out. You know, they kind of have the general overall creative control, but they're subbed out to third parties. So, Cobalt Press did Horde of the Dragon Queen and um, Rise of Tiamat. I believe Sasquatch Gaming Company did Elemental Evil. And I think the upcoming Rage of Demons, Out of the Abyss, slash Sword Coast Adventure Guide is handled by Green Ronin Gaming Company. So, be, keep that in mind again if you're, if you're really turned off by this or Rise of Tiamat. The other books are made by different people. Um, it takes place in the Forgotten Realms, so the land, you know, all Faerun, mostly up and down the Sword Coast. Mm -hmm. Um, this is designed to get you from levels 1 to 7, which is around where Rise of Tiamat, the second book, is supposed yep. to start. So this is kind of your intro, um, you start off, again, at level 1, and this way you're ready to roll into Rise of Tiamat at the end of it. You will need, there are supplemental material PDFs you can download. But it's probably in your best interest to have the monster manual. Obviously, a player's yeah. handbook is necessary. Yeah. And the dungeon master's guide isn't necessarily necessary for this, but it wasn't even out when we started playing. Yeah, that's true. It does help though because it could give you additional rules for things you might want. It could give you options for magic items. Well, there are magic items in here that are that aren't described in here. Like uh, I think you got your arrow catching shield in yeah in the book, and unless you have the uh, Dungeon Master's Guide, this book doesn't tell you what the Arrow Catching Shield does. It just gives you the words Arrow Catching Shield. Right. And you, you could, like I said, there's that PDF, but if you did, it doesn't say anywhere in here, like, go download the PDF that tells you where yeah. all the magic items are. So if you're unaware of that, you'll never know. Yeah. So you're like, great, Arrow Catching Shield, but like, guess it blocks arrows. You wouldn't and know. And catches them. Yeah. For later. Uh, so, I mean, I think that's pretty much it for the overall setting of this campaign. 
It's kind of, it's a, it's fairly small in scope, this one, I would say, overall. Yeah. Um, one thing that I do want to point into before we get, or point out, before we get into the different chapters is they did something that I really liked right in the back. Let's see if I can find it. Nope, because I'm stupid. Um, they had additional <laughs> backgrounds, like additional features and bonds in order to get you more specifically into this story. Um, no one in our game chose to go with them, but some of them are pretty cool. Like, one of them is, you were once a gold dragon, and you got too proud, so Bahamut turned you into whatever you, whatever you want, whatever your character is, and you're on this quest to try and redeem yourself in Bahamut's eyes so you can be a gold dragon again. Why don't you tell them the negative side of where it's placed? The negatives? What are you talking about? Oh, yeah, the bad part is they put that opposite the treasure you get for beating the campaign. This is the last page of the campaign. So you can't actually give your characters this page to look at. Right. Because um, if they look at it... ruins it. So I had to, I photocopied it and gave them that. Do you think that covers everything for the setting of the campaign? I don't yeah, think there's pretty really much. much I mean, more to go over as far as... Yeah. To Bayroon, for Coast, Wizard yeah. Coast, Wizards of the Coast, by the Coast. Uh, so let's talk about the goal. What is your goal as players in this game? Obviously, the yeah. overarching goal is defeat Tiamat, prevent yeah. Tiamat's rise. That's... Yeah. Um, it comes out, I think it's like in the third or fourth chapter of this. Basically, what you're trying to do is stop the Cult of the Dragon from collecting, tr like, a hoard of treasure to give to Tiamat. Right, because that's the whole thing. You want to stop them getting treasure. From what we found out in the game, again, put this mark out there, spoilers are full yeah, of all. this. So just, just you, spoilers. So just don't watch forward from this if you, uh... If you haven't played or you're thinking about playing, unless you're gonna unless run you want to cheat, unless you want to cheat, unless you want to cheat or you yeah. want to DM it, then maybe go. Yeah, ahead. definitely this. Um, the cult of the dragon were for years. They've been existing in Faerun for a while. They kind of were almost a joke because they were trying to. They spent a lot of their time working on trying to make Draco liches. Yeah, that was like their main goal is Draco liches. And then they decided like maybe that's a bad idea. Let's do something else. So let's amass a bunch of treasure. So we can give it to Tiamat, and then Tiamat will have a nice big hoard, and Tiamat can rise, and that's the whole thing. So yeah. you're trying to help build the horde of the Dragon Queen, or the hot DQ. Or you're trying to, I'm sorry, prevent that, because yeah. that's what the Cult of the Dragon is trying yeah. to do. Ransacking towns left and right, trying to gain as much treasure, magic items, whatever they can, things of value. Mm -hmm. And your goal that you eventually, like you said, about third chapter in, is to stop that from happening. And then again, also that means you get whatever the treasure you're finding, treasure. so it's benefit for your character. So I would say that pretty much covers the overall goal uh, in this. The the only part that I, I kind of have a problem is, uh, like, your characters have to be invested in the the saving of the world, because that's basically... Yeah. You don't sort of feel like that in the beginning, but yeah. that's where, you know... You learn eventually if Team Rises, it's going to destroy the world, yeah. so you need to prevent that from happening any way possible... And this is sort of the mission that you're sent on the way you can you know, help to prevent that. Mm. So that's the goal of the campaign.